people for joining us today as we speak to our respected uh, guest and scholar and teacher, Sheikh Shomali, Dr. Shomali, on uh, some very interesting topics. Now, just let me give you an introduction to why we have done this and what uh, we are hoping to achieve. So at the Stanwood Jamaat, Hujjat Stanwood Jamaat, KSIMC of London, we are trying to de dedicate the entire month of Sha'aban, which is going to start in the next two or three days, to the uh, for the happiness and for uh, people to focus upon the Imam of our time, Imam Al-Mahdi Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Farajah Sharif. And for this reason, we have uh, requested Sheikh Shomali to uh, give us some information and speak to us regarding one of the famous uh, ziyarat that we have in our books of prayers, which is ziyarat e ale Yasin. And um, Sheikh is going to do this over the next four Saturdays. So today is part one, and then we have another three parts to make it four parts in total. Same time, same place, every Saturday, inshallah. The format is going to be interactive. So Sheikh will speak. You can send in your questions. Uh, the questions should be submitted as usual on Facebook and YouTube and they will come straight through to us and inshallah we will then display it for Sheikh and for the other people to look at and we will try to address as many as we can inshallah. Um, so please keep it very interactive, keep your comments and your suggestions and your, com uh, your questions coming in and we will do our best to answer them. Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, can I ask you to begin with uh, just explaining uh, regarding dedicating this month to our 12th Imam, uh, why we have chosen this particular ziyarat, ziyarat e ale Yasin, and what link it has to our beloved Imam of the time? Yes, thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah laliyya al-Azim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al mustafa muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin la siyama baqiyatillah fi al-aradin ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu al-sharif You know, ziyara is a very important concept by itself. Ziyara for us is not a matter of physically going to a place and visit a personality only. Ziyara is a visitation by heart in the first place. And this can happen from a close uh, place or from distance you may from distance be able to visit the imam for example and you might be might be in the shrine and not visiting imam so it's a kind of encounter with the person who is visited which uh, starts with heart is with ma'rifa and love. Ma'rifa is very important. Uh, maybe at some point we can talk about why we so much we say arif and bihaqqa in ziyara. And if possible, you try to be physically also as close as possible. If not, at least you try to turn towards uh, the person that you are visiting or face qibla which is the general direction that you can visit any imam facing qibla even in some of the uh, shrines where we recite the ziyara it is recommended you face qibla because qibla is the general direction so this is by itself a very important concept and inshallah maybe uh, at some point we can reflect on the concept of ziyara but now what about imam of our time he doesn't have any <laughs> shrine, for example, where uh, billahi is buried, for example, he's alive. So what does ziyara here mean? 
again the same thing means that with your heart and with your ma'rifa you want to have an encounter with the imam you want to say your salutations your salams to imam you want to ask imam to intercede for you to pray on your behalf to help and all this for remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course among different things different uh, you know recitation recitations that we are recommended for 12th Imam Ziyarat Ali Yasin is one of the most uh, well-known most respected one most common one among our scholars and inshallah I can refer to some of the things about the chain of narration of this and sanad of this ziyarah. So ziyarat Ali Yasin is not an exception. It's one case of ziyarah of the 12th Imam as part of the line of ziyarat that we have, which is a very important way of us connecting to the chosen servants of Allah, the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt salam, and also previous Prophets and awliyaullah. Many times we also send our salams to Adam, to Musa, to Ibrahim, to Nuh salam, to Isa salam. So this is a very integral part of the life of Mu'min and in this world this ziyara is what we initiate but we hope in the time that we are need we will receive their reciprocal ziyara inshallah inshallah thank you sheikh sheikh you just touched upon it but can you expand a bit more about the sanad of this particular ziyara yes and then i want to ask you about sanad of ziyarat in general sure but regarding this particular ziyara what is the Sanad? Where did it come from? Who, who has reported it? And um, how did we get it today with us? Yes. First, I start with what a great muhaddith, a great scholar of hadith, Sheikh Abbas Qummi has mentioned in Mafati al Janan, because everyone has this at, uh, you know, their availability and uh, they can read and check. And then, inshallah, I will mention other you know things about the Sanat. Uh, Sheikh Abbas Ummi uh, Rahmatullah in the section on the Ziyarat for Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif he says that one of the things that uh, he mentions for the Sardab for the basement in Samira he says Sheikh Jalil Ahmad ibn Abi Talib Tabarsi in his noble book Al Ihtijaj. So Sheikh Tabarsi in Al Ihtijaj has narrated that from Nahiye Muqaddase, so from the sacred uh, point of you know reference to Imam Mahdi Jalalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, a reply came. A reply letter came for Muhammad Hamyari and it started of course you know with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim la l'amrihi ta'qilun wa la min awliyaihi ta'qbalun neither you understand yourself Allah's affair nor you accept from awliya Allah. Hikmatun baliqatun fama tughnin nudur. This Imam referred to this verse of the Quran that this is a kind of adequate or a kind of reaching wisdom of Allah. Fama tughnin nudur, but the warnings are not benefiting and sufficient. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillah as-salihin Salam, peace be upon us and on righteous servants of Allah Then Imam said 
whenever you want to pay attention with us or through us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is very important Ahlul Bayt never direct us to themselves never get us stuck with themselves they always refer to God they are signs for finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ziyarat Jama we say Man arad Allah bada bikum if someone wants to reach Allah, it starts with you. You find first the sign and then you get the direction and reach your destination. So Imam says that whenever you want to pay attention to God, to remember Allah through us, and also you want to remember us, then say this, Salamun ala ale yasin. So according to Shaykh Abbas Qummi, this is a respected, reliable ziyara that Sheikh Tabarsi in Al-Ihtijaj has reported and it goes back to Hemyari. In our books we find another also chain of narration. So there are actually two ways for this ziyara. One is the most famous one, which is this Himyari, who is Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Himyari al Qummi. His kunya was Abu Ja'far. He used to live uh, in time of Qaybat al Sukra, minor occultation. There are many mukatabat, many uh, written exchange between him and Imam Mahdi al Jalallah ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And one of them involved this ziyarat al Yasin. But there is another one which is going back to the second Naib of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, Muhammad ibn Uthman Amri, and Ibn Mashhadi in Al Mazarul Kabir has mentioned that. Sayyid ibn Tawus in Misbah al-Za'ir has also mentioned that and that has some differences with this one. So we have two ways of receiving this important ziyara and as I said our scholars have always paid great attention to this ziyara. Can you um, clarify one thing for us? Uh, yes. Very often in the community, we hear and we uh, understand from uh, different uh, sources and people, they say things like this ziyarat, for example, ziyarat Ali Yasin or ziyarat Ashura, this is Hadith Al-Qudsi, or mm. well, this ziyarat is known as Hadith Al-Qudsi. What does that mean and should we say things like this and does it have any validity? It depends, they are not all the same. Some ziyarat are Ma'athur, some are not Ma'athur. Ma'athur means that they are transmitted to us. Some ziyarat are composed. For example, a scholar maybe has composed a ziyara. But those who are Ma'athur, then we may have received them from Imam, or maybe it can be a Hadith Qudsi. Maybe finally it goes back to a communication from Allah that we received through Ma'asum. But Ma'asum didn't teach by himself. So there are different types of ziyarat. The best ones are those which are Ma'athur. Whether it is Hadith Qudsi or Imam has said this, it's Ma'athur. It's not composed by a scholar. But even if you recite something which is uh, composed by a scholar, or even if you go to Ziyara and you want to talk to Imam, you know, all is working, all is possible. It's just a matter of which one is better. Otherwise, you can make your own Ziyara and, you know, speak to Imam. You can speak to the Prophet, to Lady Fatima, in your own language, in your way. But the way they, they have instructed, of course, would be uh, better. Well, so to ultimately say that something is Hadith Al-Qudsi, 
this we have to take the indication from the imam if the imam says yeah this is from my father and from his father from his father and if he changes it back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore it's classed as hadith al qudsi is that yeah. correct yes yeah okay good because there is as you know over the last few years there has been a lot of uh, controversy and uh, debate in the community about these mustahab duas uh, ziyarat and other re recommended recitations that how valid are they and i think would you would you agree with me that some people are they get confused between the diff of a report and they take for example the fiqhi type of analysis of a report and they try to apply it to different things but I don't think that works, does it? Yeah, yeah. You know, our uh, requirements in different sciences are different. Mm. For example, when you want to deal with historical things, events in history, you have your own methodology. In history, when something is mentioned in a respected book, it can be an evidence. Of course, if you can, you know add to it if you can you know trace it to the earlier you know source it would be better but for example in history you cannot expect to have you know chain of narration as we have in fiqh you know for every fiqh issue when we want to issue fatwa we have maximum you know requirement of being able to document for fatwa but when it comes to history is different. When it comes to akhlaq is different. When it comes, for example, to mustahabbat uh, or, you know, ziyarat. If you want to make a religious ruling and say this is mustahab as a fatwa for istihbab, of course, again, it needs uh, lots of investigation and authentication. But if you want to say that this is something which is mentioned in some reliable books and you can make the niya of you know raja of reciting them then it's much easier especially because we have what we call qaidatu tasamu fi adillati sunan there are many hadith from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which this is the essence of it من بلغه شيء من الثباب فعمل به رجاء ذلك الثباب أوتي ذلك الثباب وإن لم أقوله. If someone is receiving something which makes sense, something reasonable, okay, not something that doesn't make sense, something which is reasonable and it's possible that this is said by the prophet and you know they say you know if you do this أعمال this recite this زيارة it is good, it has sawab, and you do it with the niya of raja, hoping that this is what Rasulullah said, you will get the reward even if Rasulullah has not said this. This is not to issue fatwa for istihbab. This is just to be able to recommend this to other people that they can you know, do it and inshallah they will get sawab. So when we want to issue fatwa, whether it is for khurma or wujub or istihbab or kira, we need maximum precision and maximum accuracy but when it comes to ziyara when it comes to history when it comes to uh, other sciences every science has its own level which may not be as uh, high or as you know exact as fiqh mm, absolutely thank you okay so before we we uh, embark upon the some of the content of the ziyara i just want to remind our Mu'minin brothers and sisters that they can send in their questions and their comments and we will display them and inshallah you'll um, uh, address them. We have one question ac actually just now. Someone is, is asking the following that uh, after Ziyarat Ali Yaseen, the dua which is recommended to recite. Yes. Uh, is it a must? Well, we are talking about mustahab things, but he has written, is it a must or what would be your advice about it? No, it's not a must, but uh, because the whole thing is not an obligation. But if you want to gain full thawab, so you bring it in full. If you want to recite just first part, it's fine. 
even if you recite one page <laughs> at each time, it's, it's good. But if you want to act according to the instruction and get <laughs> the whole package, so you recite from, recite from beginning to the end. Yeah, Asad. Okay, Allah, there's another question here. Um, this is an interesting one. Why is this ziyarat a little bit neglected and it's not recited in our centers? Other ziyarat are recited, but this one generally uh, speaking, uh, I mean, I've been a member of uh, Koja Jamaat since birth, so we hardly ever hear this ziyarat being recited in public recitation. Mm. Um, any ideas about that? Everything can have a beginning, inshallah. Now it's the beginning. <laughs> yes. That's right. In 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 Gujarati we say Jiare Jagya Tiare Sawar. When you wake up it's morning. Yes. So when you wake up you can start. Okay, inshallah. In, in Farsi we say Mahira Harvach as Abbegiri Tazas. Means whenever you take the fish from water is fresh. So inshallah now uh, we make a point that we would more uh, regularly inshallah recite this beautiful ziyara which has lots of points lots of aqaid lots of akhlaq are here mm -hmm. yeah okay inshallah so shaykh um the idea is that you will uh, inshallah expand upon this uh, ziyarat in more depth and then inshallah. as the questions come if you will allow me i will just sure. uh, draw your attention to the questions and we will address them as we go along but the idea is every 10, 12, 15 minutes, we will uh, pause for some questions and interactions, inshallah. Sure.